Another week, boys, and another twat. This week at Bungie, we prepare for rivalry. Announced earlier this morning, Guardian Games is fast on the approach, beginning April 21st at 10 a.m. Pacific. The games begin. Titans, Hunters, and Warlocks will compete to prove which class is the most dedicated in Destiny 2. Now, your entry into the competition begins with a visit to Eva Levante. Each Guardian will receive a class item to adorn while taking part in the competition. Bronze, silver, and gold medals will be available to earn daily, each of which will focus on specific game modes. To earn medals, equip your new class item, defeat enemies, pick up laurels on the battlefield, and advance your quest for medals you desire. Bungie continues, we fully acknowledge that class populations are a little lopsided. Hunters are so fabulous with their capes that there are indeed more of them than warlocks or titans. To help offset this so hunters don't steal the show every day, medals will be weighted slightly per class to maintain an even playing field. We aren't filling in with the numbers to force wins on alternate classes. Hunters could still take this entire thing if they put enough effort in. Now, about those class items. At Daily Reset, your cloak, mark, or bond will update to reflect what placement your team has taken. As an example, if a Titan took the W for the day one, their mark will update with a wonderful gold sigil, with Warlocks in second and Hunters in third. The class items will be updated to feature silver and bronze respectively. All right, so these are the looks right here okay okay and it will change day by day i will say though depending on the activity is what's really going to decide who's going to win right like if it's going to be very much pve focus i don't know i feel like warlocks are going to take the cake because most hunters in our respective pools are probably in pvp right but who knows how this competition works i'm sure it's going to be a nice mix between all of these but yeah an interesting take here i like this picture right here because this is actually going to update day by day depending on the placement and this is the first time that bungie has actually like pitted the different classes against each each other now personally i'm gonna be repping titan okay listen i'm titan moses i got to all right i didn't come off the side of the mountain with those stone tablets of commandments bestowed upon me to simply find myself on a roly-poly hunter class or the dress wearing warlocks that ain't me man and just ask yourself who do you want in the corner with you somebody that's just gonna go invis halfway through the battle and disappear or some warlock that's gonna be trying to read chapter four mid gunfight no you want a titan so i don't care Titans got the short end of the stick season after season. Just remember, Bungie fears this. Now moving up. So what is the ultimate prize for this event? Bungie states, at the end of the event, your daily placements will be combined for a final score. Depending on your team's standing, your class items will be locked to the respective placements for the remainder of the year. If you're looking for more ways to represent your class, Eva has you covered. Each week, you'll be offered a free quest to earn an exotic ghost shell, one theme to each Guardian class. Complete this quest every week to collect all three. Oh man, these are actually kind of dope. Look at them. Got the bird there for the warlock, the snake there for hunters, and the lion for the tanks. Oh! Additionally, a new exotic machine gun will become available during this event. We look forward to seeing what mayhem this tool of destruction will inspire when you get it in your hands. Yes, this thing has actually been coined. I think Fallout called it Skyburner's Girth, and it's quite girthy. Look at it. And it's kind of funny. You cannot shoot this weapon, at least from what I'm hearing, unless it's fully charged. It's got a charge up feature, but it won't actually discharge any damage or any shots until like fully spun up. So just imagine a sweet business that's like sitting there spinning up, spinning up. It wants to blow but it won't because it's saving its load and then ah that actually sounds pretty nasty now eververse will also have some items in store for the event oh really i was actually getting concerned a single finisher will be available for silver only while all other items may be purchased with bright dust as they appear on the storefront as a note all guardian games weekly repeatable bounties will grant bright dust to match previous seasonal events guardians games begins upon the weekly reset this Tuesday, 10 a.m. Make sure to launch your game a little early to grab the required update 2.8.1. More on that in the player support report below. All right, guys, that's a big one. We'll be covering it, man. I'm probably just going to be racing to get Skyburner's Girth there, and then we'll just go off of that. We've got some pretty good machine guns, right? But I think we've been dying to have a heavy hitter machine gun. Like, I know Xenophage is it, but let's be real. The only reason why Xenophage is hot now is because some of the nerds that were handing out the snipers, and more specifically, 
basically the nerf handed out to Izanagi. I want this thing to absolutely eat Xenophage. Now moving on, Guardian's Heart update. At the time of this writing, the Guardian Heart Charity Initiative has generated over $450,000 for relief efforts in the face of COVID pandemic. For those that may not be up to speed for this fundraising effort, we've partnered with Direct Relief, who will work with a network of providers across the globe to deliver the supplies that healthcare workers need. This includes basic personal protective equipment, including gloves, masks, gowns, and face shields. The hospitals where they work will also receive food covers, prescription medication, portable oxygen concentrators, ventilators, and other intensive care unit equipment. Any donation of $20 or more will earn you the exclusive Guardian Heart emblem. As a quick note, these will be distributed by Bungie within a wink of your donation. Keep an eye out as the email may be filtered to promotional or even spam folders in your inbox. There's also a number of Bungie bounties that are promoting this, which I believe there is actually a separate bounty tied to those Bungie bounties that you can obtain when matching the Bungie bounty targets. Great stuff. Really, really, guys. Big shout out to Bungie for hosting this, but big shout out to you guys for contributing to this. Now, moving on. Problem children. Bungie states, it seems that Guardian Games kicked off a little early for some exotic items in our game. In terms of competition, Telesto, Winter Scow, and Worm Guy Caress are eyeing the top spot for biggest problem child in our sandbox. The Destiny player support team has an update on their standings. So the report, next week Guardian Games kicks off the release of Destiny 2 update 2.8.1. So the server maintenance will actually roll out at 9, 9.45. Destiny 2 will go offline. 10 a.m. is when update 2.8.0 begins. 10.01, Destiny is back online. 11 a.m., Destiny 2 service maintenance will conclude. Now, during this, things like beetle errors should finally be addressed. Money states during the team's investigation into beetle errors, it was discovered that players who were in towers with more than 13 people would get beetle errors at a higher rate. As a temporary workaround, we have changed the number of players who can be in the tower from 26 to 12 until a more permanent fix can be deployed. Now, as far as the other upcoming resolved issues, these will be resolved next week when 2.8.1 rolls out. Word of Dawn will now correctly generate orbs of light. Hallelujah. Fully upgrading any bunker will now unlock the associated Wormmon Security Triumph, interacting with the statue of whatever the hell this is, Edo, for the wish and request, and Shadow Throne will no longer crash the game. Hot damn! Level 32 PDS upgrade can now be used to clear the bunker by any character. Rasputin's Daily Seraph weapon can now be claimed on any character. Players who've completed the Forsaken campaign will find the Lawless Frontier lore book entry, By Thy Tongue Be Damned, complete and available to claim. Friends, listed in player rosters, should no longer show up as black nameplates with zero power. Now, as far as the current known issues with no fix in sight, Winter Sky and Worm Guy Caress Exotic Islands are retaining increased melee damage after their intended timer cooldowns. They have been disabled until a fix can be deployed at a later date. Also, the Ingram from Trials Flawless Chest will disappear for players who have earned all available trial rewards. Wait, what? Wait, what's that last one, huh? The Ingram from Trials Flawless Chest will disappear for players who've already earned all available trials rewards? Well, that sounds like a pretty big one. I mean, all of these are kind of big. I'm, I'm just saying. Now, when you go flawless, your Ingram's gonna disappear? I don't know. Somebody explain that a little more. Maybe you've already encountered this bug and let me know exactly what this means. Either way it goes, Winner's Guy, Worm Guy Caress, as well as Telesto, and they didn't even say anything about Telesto, because I think Telesto's actually okay for once. But I do know that Winner's Guy and Worm Guy Caress are both disabled. It's actually working on a build Monday and Tuesday, and literally, as I was making the build video, Cheese Forever puts out a video on Worm God Caress, and then BAM! Exotics is stable. And nothing against Cheese. Cheese is doing his job, man! He's showing us Cheese! But I will say, these are some problem exotics, right? They be messing with the sandbox like crazy. I don't know who's first. I would say, actually, Telesta is still probably the number one weapon for messing up the sandbox, right? But Worm God, man, that thing's been disabled so many times. Now, last but not least, we come to a close on another TWAB, but we understand that there are some topics that weren't covered on here. Eververse, trials improvements, our plans to address FOMO, tackling bounty problems, and more. There's also questions like, what about feeling like players can't play their way? What about ritual weapons and anti-cheat improvements, etc.? We've been having frequent syncs to talk through these things. Many of them require a long-term plan with short-term mitigation to help ease the pain. The last thing we want to do is to overcommit to changes that ultimately may be reversed or sign the team up for work that leads to crunch. We don't want to make 
promises we know we can't keep, so to speak. Over the next few weeks, we hope to solidify some plans and get them communicated out. We're looking at what can be accomplished in season 11, which is coming much faster than many of us can believe. Some topics will be tackled in season 12 as it require a larger scale systematic change. Thank you again to everyone that's been giving feedback on Destiny over the years. This train never stops, and we hope to share our next steps with you soon. Till next time, we'll see you out there in the wild. Okay, let me just take a, a statement there. Bungie states, the last thing we want to do is overcommit to changes that ultimately may be reversed or sign the team up for work that leads to crunch. On some level, I can completely understand that statement, and by no means do I have any hand in any of this when it comes to development. On the other side of things, the trials population is plummeting and plummeting fast. On some levels, even short-term solutions is completely fine, and it's better to crunch today to save the player base that you have, at least in comparison to the alternative. Not trying to get doomsday on you guys. There's a lot of things that needs fixing, but anti-cheat, that's something that I think every cheater has been laughing about. I've even listened in on conversations with certain cheaters that actively cheat in Destiny, and they've been asked point blank, why is it that you cheat, and how have you been able to cheat for so long? And they all say the same thing. Bungie does not have an anti-cheat system in place. They have a report feature that requires manual vetting. So yes, I can understand we're committing to something even short term could cause crunch in the future. But if there really is somebody at Bungie right now or a group of somebodies that are having to sit there and manually crunch through the thousands of reports that are constantly being sent to them, I can only imagine how much crunch that puts on them. So understand when dealing with cheaters and cheaters is becoming worse and worse as the weeks progress. Again, as the population diminishes, the likelihood of you running up against cheaters is going to occur more often. This is not something that requires one final solution, some long-term elaborate plan. Maybe that plan would have been okay had it gone in place in early March, but it didn't. Whatever systems at work right now do not work. And as such, when you have this many holes in your ship, you don't think about what you have to plug it with. You just start plugging and hope to God you can bail that thing out till you get it ashore. It's a bitch. What's even worse, as a content creator, I don't really feel like I have a way to help bail this out other than just stating comments like we're stating right now. This is it. This is all we got. This is all I got, man. I wish I had some other way to contribute. I wish we all did. But if I was Bungie, I would just start plugging with anything and everything you may have. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.